This demo uh, is about web part that is hosted in uh, Microsoft Teams as a personal app. And uh, probably, as you know, the personal apps or personal tabs in Teams, they don't have uh, settings. So for SharePoint framework developers, it means that uh, this dot properties object is never populated. It's always undefined. Uh, but in real scenarios, we probably need to store a uh, setting somewhere and to uh, customize different uh, behaviors of our web part based on different users. And, and uh, there are multiple different approaches that we can uh, use here. Uh, one of the approaches, for example, uh, uh, described by uh, Robert Scouten, sorry if I pronounced the last name correctly. Uh, it is, uh, this approach is about using uh, OneDrive documents and in document you can store all the uh, configurations for the web parts. Uh, another option is uh, Microsoft Graph custom uh, properties for users. And the approach that I want to show you today is about OneDrive as well, but it's about uh, creating a custom list in OneDrive and uh, storing the information in there. So first of all, here you see the uh, web part itself. It has custom uh, panel where you can do the same configuration of the properties like in property pane, uh, when you click save, it should update, hopefully. No, it's not. Yes, it's updated. And if I refresh, the properties should be saved so you will see the same configuration. So everything works. Now I want to show you the uh, OneDrive list. So here I'm on my, my OneDrive. It means that uh, because personal apps are about users, so each user has uh, uh, unique configurations. That why, that's why uh, we can use users OneDrive to save uh, their unique uh, settings. So I have this uh, WP properties list on my OneDrive uh, and I have one record here with the key of my web part and uh, web part properties as a uh, separate column. Uh, why this approach is good, at least uh, from my point of view, if you are uh, ISV, you can have single list in OneDrive and you can store different uh, configurations here for different web parts. So for example, if you're providing a bundle of like 10, I don't know, web parts, you will have 10 different options here with, with 10 different keys and request information about properties from this list. You don't need to create separate file or a separate instance of library for each and every uh, configuration and each and every web part. So let's look at the code. Uh, it should be a good size. So uh, there is not much interesting from the web part itself. The only thing that we are doing here, we can't uh, get properties from this dot properties object. And instead of that, we are creating the uh, web part properties service uh, that actually gets properties from OneDrive and when needed set properties to OneDrive as well based on web part key and web part properties are kind of custom properties object from our uh, web part. And the interesting part is the service, service, sorry. So I have the interface for the uh, web part property service. So it basically means if you uh, copy and paste the uh, code from this web part to um, your solutions, you can implement some other approach using just the, this interface. It has just two methods, get properties and set properties. And I have the implementation for this interface, OneDrive list web part properties service. Uh, under the hood, it is using uh, Microsoft Graph to communicate with uh, OneDrive. And the uh, main things that are done here, first we are getting uh, my site graph ID. So this is done using slash me slash drive slash root. And from there we are getting SharePoint IDs. Uh, it actually allows us to uh, construct site ID that is used to uh, work with the uh, SharePoint and OneDrive sites inside uh, Microsoft Graph. The second request that we need is to get settings list ID. So we are trying to get our list from OneDrive. It, if it's not there, we will create. Uh, the list first and then store this ID in our web part again because we need that to uh, store our settings. And uh, two main methods or implementation of our interface is basically 
really simple as well. In our set properties, we are getting this list ID that we previously stored, or if it's not, we are creating the list. Uh, we are updating the uh, internal cache because we don't want to uh, do all the requests all the time. When one property, for example, changed, uh, we have our instance of the uh, service, so uh, it will be just populated from our memory, right? So then we are checking if there is existing item for our web part properties. If yes, in that case, we will just update the specific field with our new properties. Otherwise, we will create a new row in our list, new item in our list, and provide properties in there. So as I said, this approach allows you to uh, have uh, multiple web parts all in the same list with different configurations, and it will automatically create additional list items for you if it's not there. So that's probably it. It's a pretty simple code, and uh, go to uh, a KMS as per FX web parts, I believe, uh, and uh, the example is there, and uh, copy and paste the code if you need, and feel free to use it in your uh, custom solutions. Now, Alex, let's let's talk about a few few of the implementation styles. So can you go back on your uh, SharePoint, your OneDrive site, and uh, not on the code, um, but the, yes. the, the site, and let's and just just kind of exp explaining this model. And obviously, if you would go to your uh, view lists uh, view on the site, you wouldn't anybody would not be able to see the list, which is good. Yes, so it's course. kind of a, it's yes. a hidden list. And uh, so you're creating a list which is hidden, and you only get access on it if you know the URL. And yes. so that's actually smart way uh, and the kind of a classic way how we are storing data in the in the SharePoint in general. So hidden lists. There's actually a lot of hidden lists in the sites uh, where we're start storing the the information, um, but. Uh, just out of curiosity, can you actually go to your app catalog? Don't go away from this tab. We'll get back in here. And then I will actually give you the URL uh, on the chat uh, in your app catalog site. If you go to slash lists slash component manifests. Mm -hmm. Just getting some insights on on uh, how we, as a Microsoft and engineering, we're actually taking advantage of this exactly the same model. So when I think about it, um, whatever Alex showed as the storage option and creating a list behind of the scenes, the user has always permissions creating his own list and then saving the information to the list uh, in the in the OneDrive. Uh, it's exactly the same what we do a lot in SharePoint as well. So even your individual SharePoint framework components, these are the ones. These are actually the ones which we're operating behind the scenes. Obviously, it is not intended to anybody to go here and edit the settings and all of that because it, does, it actually breaks stuff. But if you need it, this is good information from a troubleshooting perspective because you might need to have to go here and, and then see if something is there. Now, if you go back on your own uh, list implementation, Alex, um, again, one of the things here, uh, super important to notice uh, is that you want to name the list using some sort of a unique naming convention within your company so that because it would be pretty awkward Alex if you, if your company would be using exactly the same named list than some yes. other ISV of and course. then that might actually <laughs> cause conflict so there's there's kind of an interesting implications uh, in here so Alex, so there's there's few questions related on so first of all um, I might actually confuse people on the client side components and uh, uh, list uh, that was only to show that we're using that kind of a model and an approach and a pattern in general and out of the box. You cannot actually save the information in there. It was mainly to, to show the model that we, whatever Alex shows, we use it, use it internally as well. Then there was a good comment from Arun. Uh, is it not better to use Microsoft Graph open extensions or schema extensions for specific user to store this information? Yeah, so basically it was, was one of the approaches I mentioned in the beginning of the demo that you can use custom properties or uh, schema extensions for users and store the information there. It's, it's just one of the approaches. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then what's the better approach? What's the bad approach? It's always debatable. There's there's advantages and disadvantages on different options. So whatever actually feels more comfortable, comfortable for the developer that would be yep. the chosen. Yes. Cool. Uh, I think we went through the, all of the all of the questions in the chat, uh, pretty much, and just wanted to kind of reiterate what we were showing so that people understand the power. Can you go back still on the on the web part or the personal yes. application? Just making yes. sure that people do understand that this is a weird thing, um, but it's actually by design in Microsoft Teams that there is no 
uh, setting option for personal applications. So personal applications are not intended to have a native out-of-the-box configuration option. And that's what we're basically, yeah, it is, I, I do agree on that. Uh, but apparently from their perspective, they decided that that's not apparently needed. So hmm, I don't know. But I think that's it for now. So thank you, thank you, yeah, Alex. What, what, one, one? one remark, yep. uh, yeah, bec because there is no out-of-the-box settings in uh, Teams, it means that you will need to implement these uh, property settings by yourself, this panel, yep. because you will never see a property pane provided by SharePoint framework. Good point, good point. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Now, it might be that uh, in the future uh, editions and versions of SharePoint Framework, like SharePoint version uh, Framework version 1.12 or 13 or 14, uh, who knows if we skip 13, because there was no SharePoint version 13 even in either. Anyway, that's side sidetrack. But in those, there might be some native support for something, maybe, uh, if people find these kind of things useful. Um, but but again, like Alex showed, implementing this as a own extensibility or own implementation in a, is not a massive deal. Mm -hmm.